what got me to stage? A vision. A vision got me to stage. A vision of goals. A, 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 a surrender at the at the base of the stairs. A, I'm just bringing it. I, I married myself. Like I, I did. Yeah. It was just this beautiful, like stripping away of the old part of me, choosing the new part of me, being invested in the new part of me, going well beyond what I thought was possible for me, and then just just knowing that I'm going to make a stage and then just choosing it. <laughs> So here we are, the amazing Rebecca Francisca has joined me for the inaugural Powerful Creators podcast because she is my dear friend and an amazing powerful creator. And so we want to have the best powerful creators on this podcast to show us the power of focus, to show us how when we live from our hearts and we take action guided by our intuition, by our connection to our higher intelligence, to our higher self, how amazing things can happen. And what better example than the beautiful life of Rebecca Francisca. So we're going to hop into that in just a moment. So, um, Rebecca, welcome along. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. It's, uh, it's beautiful to see you. Thank you so much for having me, Jason. I've actually been really excited to yeah, go with the flow with this and see what unfolds. Every time we connect, we uh, have a very magical time. So, yeah, let's see what story we can tell today and, yeah, how we can lighten up the world a little bit. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. We'll bring the unicorns and rainbows. So, yeah. um, <laughs> Easy, done. <laughs> done, bang. Yeah, there we so go. it is. Throw in some <laughs> glitter and it's all looking good. All right. So... Being a powerful creator, you, of course, you know, you didn't, you, weren't, you didn't pop out of the womb and go, hey, world, I'm here, I'm here, I'm powerful, I'm a creator. So can you just tell us a little bit of your, a little bit of your journey that brought you to this point in your life? Okay, yeah, I thought about this before we jumped on today, and I'm like, okay, I think a little bit of a story about from there to here or what brought me here was, yeah, it's relevant. Um, so Kiwi girl, born in NZ Bro in New Zealand, um, born and bred in a small little rugby town. Um, yeah, went to uh, all girls high school. My parents broke up when I was 10. Um, my mum had a horse accident. Mum had head problems from or big trauma to the, to the head when I turned about 10. Um, I moved in with my dad when I was about 15, kind of had a bit of a free reign, had an, had a um, challenging relationship with my mum, didn't really have too many rules or boundaries, um, seemed to have come through my teenage years pretty, sca- pretty, pretty good, um, but also, yeah, not with as much direction and uh, groundedness and sureness that I required to be successful, I guess. Um, those were all skills I needed to learn, but before um, all of that, I had to go through some pretty confronting, challenging, uh, self created <laughs> times where I would feel very, very exposed. Um, very like a myriad of emotions that would contract me and make me want to hide from the world. And um, obviously, yeah, we all we all have to learn in our own special way. 
try and blame the world up with my dad's fault. He didn't give me boundaries. It was whatever, didn't show me what I needed to see, or it was my mum's fault, etc. Um, and then that's led into my relationship um, over the years and my childhood structure, as we would say, or childhood um, instructions that were, you know, given to me and how I would therefore perceive the world and others. Um, played out in my relationships and what I thought was normal uh, turned out to be quite uh, destructive and yeah I would repeat that over and over again um, but every time each time coming home further to to myself and while I wanted to kind of show the world, or not show the world, but while I wanted to take accountability for my own genius, I still, yeah, I, I was still giving the power outside of myself and allowing other people to create for me through a real fear of um, not being able to do it myself of not feeling empowered, of not feeling safe, of not feeling confident. Um, yeah, and just allowing the external world to distract me from my truth, from my real dreams, from my uh, visions that, oh, that would be great to create. Or I would, I would look at other people's creations as, uh, more, uh, they're more capable than I am, um, etc. However, yeah, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but now that I see that, I also see that the dream has always been there, the truth has always been there, the knowing of that I'm that I want to live my life a certain way has always been there, and not offering myself the permission in the early days um yeah i would i would go through phases sorry i might jump from place to place <laughs> uh, but i would go through phases of um being really creative and being really um driven and then i would oscillate back into a relationship and i would distract myself with someone else's creation or I would try something and not give it my my complete and utter authority. I would um, yeah, learn learn a skill and then move on and learn another skill and not really establish myself in that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so that's so that's that's beautiful. And you know what's what's important about what you're sharing with us is that what I really want the audience to take into their hearts to really a message that can live in their hearts, you know, is the message from you that we're all human beings. We all go through our stuff. There's so many learnings and heartaches and, oh, God, I wish I didn't do that kind of moments as we, as, as we go through life. But it doesn't stop us and it doesn't mean that we're not amazing freaking creators. Mm -hmm. We just have to step into step into our power. Now we, you and I, we're both magnetic mind coaches. You know, we've had this incredible teachings over the years from Christopher Duncan, the magnetic mind conscious education. But what, what, what was the turning point before you met Chris? What was that real kind of, you know, oh, I'm starting to really see who I am? Um... Knowing deep down inside myself that I kept giving my power away and that I really wanted to, I had this passion within myself at that I really wanted to offer or to give or to see or to create. <laughs> yeah, from this from this genius, from this part of me, and I never really thought that what I was, what I had created was what I was going to create. Um, finding, finding this work 
for me, that was the turning point. It was when I found this work, it was a massive relief because it was speaking my language. It was finally giving me permission to believe in myself or to believe in what I already believed in or to give the power back to the truth that there is more, that that there is something else to another way to be and and that I can live my true nature and purpose, which is fun. One one thing that my dad said to me when I was, you know, a teenager looking for work or whatever, he said, go and be a nurse. I said, no, I, I want to go and have fun with my life. And that, that, that's my truth. He said, I just want to have fun. So I went and did an outdoor recreation course and I learned how to mountain climb and, and, and white water kayak and, um, you know, uh, bushcraft and survival skills and sea kayaking. And I ended up, you know, this, this outdoor instructor and I just loved my life. Like I, I love my life, and and that was normal for me. Um, and then I think the world got a bit too loud, and I went through a couple of relationships. So we'll always have this, you know, this pattern, this the structure that we will play out, and it will always generally be in a certain area of our life, or each area will play out in its own individual way. Mine was relationships and yeah, every time I would go through one, I would give a little bit more of my power away and I would give a little bit more of my focus away to this need of someone else to create with me. And so I think the turning point was it was a bit simultaneous really it was finding this work at the same time as going through a really challenging karmic relationship where we were divine reflections of each other and we were witnessing our dysfunction within this container and enough was enough and the, and, and, and what what happened over a period of you know a few years is that all these parts of me became very exposed and I felt very very exposed and I also felt very unstable and yeah and so then from there I was back I backed myself right up against a wall there was no one else to there was just no one <laughs> funny isn't it isn't it interesting is that the truth is so obvious yet we've got to get out of our own way to realize that there's actually no one that can there's no one coming to save me there's just no one except me and that concept in its own was and, and is and still is not for the faint-hearted like it's like jumping off a something high and knowing that you're going to be caught it's it's like you, you're going to and it took me an I even metaphor I remember even in our sessions and the fellow coaches I just I just knew that there was this edge that I just hadn't yet jumped off it was there but I wasn't jumping I wasn't and and interestingly enough my whole metaphor or concept or perception or of life is we can fly like we fly and I knew that and I know that and I believe in that so fiercely that like if we have this this um you know concept of you know all possibility well if there's the field of all possibility and there's a limitless field then there is no reason why we can't fly and all and beyond so yeah there's been these two this, this polarity of yeah not being able to fly by myself needing others to a point where holy i don't even know who i am <laughs> yeah. yeah well 
funnily enough, I had a flying dream last night. Of course you did. <laughs> well, it wasn't. My, my flying dream's a little bit different to, to, to like having wings. In my flying dreams, I can kind of somehow make some kind of physical effort with my body and I kind of rise up in the, in the air. So in this dream, I was with this whole group of people and things had got a little bit, things had turned from really good to really like the whole group had kind of turned against me and there was tension and I was like, geez, where did this come from? What the hell's going on? And then somehow in my, in the deepest recesses of my consciousness, I was like, this is a dream. And if I can make myself fly, then I know this is a dream. And so I started to do the thing and get myself to start to fly. And then the last kind of image in the dream is me just kind of like, whoop, just like disappearing over something, um, you know, up in the air. So, it was like, for me, I've internalized, literally, over decades, flying as, as, as freedom. And the happiest yeah. dreams that I have, and the dreams when I feel the most empowered in my whole life, are those dreams when I'm able to, more or less effortlessly, be in, be in, in the sky. So, uh -huh. it's incredible that you're, that you're, you're saying that. So, what I wanna, yeah. what I wanna talk about, is because you're talking about you know that deep integrity with yourself, knowing that you haven't fully given your gifts, knowing that you're only going to give your gifts when you jump off that edge. Yeah. So there's there's a woman by the name of Lynn Grabhorn. She wrote an incredible book called Excuse Me, Your Life Is Waiting. It's about the law of attraction, and in this amazing book. She says that the first step towards, you know, moving towards your, your true manifestation is knowing what you don't want. And when I read your amazing post, because we'll talk about your fitness journey in a little, you know, coming up now. When I read your amazing post, the first thing that you started off talking about was like, no more. So can you just take us into that? Take us into that moment of decision when you just went, okay, there's an edge there. I don't know what the hell is on the other side of that edge, but I'm just going to step off. Yeah, so it took a lot of exposure of self, a lot of witness of self first, um, a lot of witness of self in the same, uh, the same creation and a lot of stuckness. And that manifests as, uh, yeah, pain, internal pain, and internal contraction, and depression, anger, um, etc. And it took a surrender to that for me to really, um, see it and and then it took a series of yeah choosing choosing to move forward despite not really knowing what that looked like um and saying yes to opportunities as they arose so my daughter wanted to join the gym again and I'd taken a few years off the gym and and then my friend was doing this bodybuilding competition and I was a yes girl at the time and I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds really good. Okay, well, I need a goal. Like, I don't want to go to the gym and not have a goal. And then I just said, yes, okay, I'll do it. Um, that there was the point where I was still in disbelief. Like, is that really what I'm going to do? Like, after all this magnetic mind work and yoga and this and that, I'm going to go and body burn. I'm like, hang on a second. I told myself that this is what I was going to do. But this whole work is about stepping into the unknown. And it's all about surrender. And now I see, and it's all about the next obvious action. And turning your dysfunction into your genius or your so my fitness would be my 
go-to thing. I would always feel better after fitness. I wouldn't get fat. You know, the whole, if I'm fit and healthy, I'm, I, I look good, therefore I'm lovable. That was my, you know. And then once I'd kind of unplugged all of that and witnessed all of that and let that go and recoded all of that, it then became the next obvious thing. And the permission was, you know, I would have loved to have been a fitness model. My mum said I could be a model. I rejected any sort of compliment. But really, at the end of the day, it was like, of course, the most obvious thing to be doing. You were in the gym before you met this, in this relationship. You were at a point where you want to see what you've created. You want to, you know you can. Um, you can't, like, I couldn't keep looking at other people and saying that they're, you know, they're more capable than I am. So it was just a yes. And then, yeah, I just started showing up. I didn't know I could. Never counted calories in my life. Never measured any sort of fitness in my life. And I just said yes. And it was this this thing. I guess I chose a good coach. It was amazing. Like we we must yeah, keep like I still can't put words to how impactful a coach can be, especially when your coach is this my coach was in his genius. So it was like I just fell into this vortex in a way. And then the people around me were all for it. Whereas I would have thought that there would be so much judgment. So even though the sport is extremely all about judgment, it's, it's this, you know, um, illusion that you, you end up creating on stage. But I, all, but I also had to be honest that I love beauty and all these things that, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. So what I'm, you know, what I, what I, what I'm reflecting on is that because you were talking about, you know, turning, in a sense, turning your dysfunction into your, into your, into your superpower, and I think that there's a thread. And that thread is, is the thread of pain, you know, is the thread of, 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 of challenge, of things really burning. Because the last time that we connected, you know, you took me a little bit through, through your journey, you know, like how much you had to do for your fitness, how much you had to do with your food and, 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 and all of the rest. And so there's a kind of discipline that's, that, 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 that's present there, but you couldn't access that discipline without having first in a really raw way, accessed your pain and accessed what was really going on for you. So can you just kind of walk us through what it's like to be confronted with those aspects of yourself, you know, that want to turn away from your choice? Like you've said yes, but then there are aspects of yourself that are popping up, sometimes it seems on a daily basis, and they're just going, hell no. All the time, yeah. So this, yeah, the first part was that I chose the stage. So that was something that had massive tension around it. And I told people I was doing it. So I kind of created a structure of, um, if I don't then, which is not necessarily successful, a little bit fear-based, but what it gave me the opportunity to do was see these parts of me that that still weren't on board, play mm. them out, mm. play them out, witness them, see the consequence, not judge it, and then stand back up and do it again. So the biggest, the biggest lesson, one of the biggest, one of the biggest, one of the big lessons I learned was it's not about falling back, it's about standing back up again. Mm. It's about finishing. It's about showing up. 
it's about doing the thing that you don't think you can do, but then doing it and seeing that you've done it. And then mm. witness that it's not even you doing it. <laughs> when we really choose something from our heart, that's the driving force. So it's a journey from the head to the heart. Oh. And, it's a, and it's a giving the power back to the heart. And it's witnessing the head going, no, you don't know how to survive this. Like, how can you possibly carry on if you've never carried on like this before? Mm. And it's showing yourself that that's what you, because, but, you, but also having this person beside you, walking this path with you, guiding you, because we don't see our own blind spots. Mm. Right? So I really cherished having this person guide me on this journey that I'd, we'd always need a guide. We're going to need a guide when we climb a big mountain or in mm -hmm. any sort of, um, yeah, and I guess the pain of not changing, the pain of not changing was more than the pain of changing. Mm. So staying the same wasn't an option just not an option and I've had I've had that realization on another level again even today how could I possibly get through life without achieving these dreams like how like it's just not an option wow it's just not an option and you know like I've, I've re-signed with my coach and I've now yeah. shifted, I've shifted another gear and I'm like, well, if I created that, then how can I not carry on? I can't flip. I've, so there's a phrase that we learned um, from my with our other, one of our other beautiful coaches and friends, Elizabeth Clarizio, and backsliding. Mm. I backslide. I backslid. Like we always back, often backslide a lot. Mm. No more. No more. You know, like. I'm only moving forward now. Um, Absolutely. Now, Liz is gloriously connected to higher truth, to, to, to God, really, you know, and she speaks from that place. And so she's got this integrity and authenticity and power that comes mm -hmm. through because of that connection. Now, it's... Too, is it too weird to make a connection between your connection to your higher truth and being a fitness model on 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 stage? How do we how do we how do we make that connection for the for the audience? I guess it's not about the judgment for me. It's about being the best version of myself possible, and I love fitness, mm. and I love I love beauty, and I love mm. health and well being, and I love shining and I love um you know I was that girl at high school that would hide behind the stage wanting to go and try out but for being too shy yeah it's it's it's, it's my genius it's there, there there's no judgment here like a piano player is genius and you know it's my gen I, I've, I've I've I love fitness <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Because, you know, what you shared with me, you know, was that when you, your, your password for the, for the podium sign on, you know, had, mm -hmm. had gold in it, you know? Yeah. And you're, and you're just saying, I love shining. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. what, there's, there's a beauty to this because it's like, it's not, it's not for the applause. It's not, it's not for the amazing accolades. It's, it, it's, it's not even for the, I did it. It's just because it's just true for you to shine. It's true for yeah. you to be the girl that's on the stage, that's being all that she can be. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And so, and, yeah, 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 go on. And to be honest, yeah. it's been very challenging for me to, to, to be uh, like part of my, you know, if I was to be described to an, as a little girl, I was effervescent and bubbly, you know. Um, but that there, like when when you live in a, a a space of joy, you can light people's shadows to say, and it can frustrate people. And so I've given my power to 
other people's feelings and and you know try to I guess be good um and then there's this other part of me that's just a big rebel and just wants to I know of I like believe in myself and 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 then there's this other part that's guided it's just I've just I was just guided it's just I've just surrendered to, to the guidance in a way like um what got me to stage a vision a vision got me to stage a vision of goals a a, a, a surrender at the at the base of the stairs uh i'm just bringing it uh you know uh i i, I married myself like i just you know like this is I did. Yeah. It was just this beautiful, like, stripping away of the old part of me, choosing the new part of me, being invested in the new part of me, going well beyond what I thought was possible for me, and then just just knowing that I'm going to make a stage and then just choosing it. <laughs> Glorious. I just chose it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go win gold today. And it didn't come from an egoic part of me. It just came from a let's just go and do it for fun. Yeah. And so right. when things got tough, as they did on a daily basis, with fitness goals, with, 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 with food restrictions, calorie restrictions and everything else, and then you did the, you know, Liz thing, there was the backsliding. Yeah. How can we put together backsliding and marrying yourself? Uh, non-judgment and acceptance oh. and understanding the difference between uh, your limited states of mind and your heart's truth. Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. as we backslide and we go into this self-sabotage, the way we've always survived, and then we, we wake up and we witness ourselves there. It's about being fiercely brave and courageous to expose that part of you in the first place that's creating self-sabotage, to witness her, for example, at the fridge, <laughs> and then to not judge her, or maybe she's already eaten. Maybe, maybe, maybe I've already eaten the food, right? Not judge her, but here it's her home, right? Like, okay then, and it's, hmm, there's a balance. For me, it works for me to say, well, if you're going to eat it, you're going to go and train. But we have to be careful with that, so then we can create a bit of a oscillation in that sense. Yep. However witnessing her accepting that she's made that choice not judging her and then realigning and getting back up and doing it again and just seeing literally what is it i want to create where am i now okay remember that's what you want to create what am i going to give my power to get up and do it do the thing that needs to be done and, and yep. this, this comes back. This comes back to the foundations of our work. It's not easy. No one ever said it was easy, but it's simple. And it's all about truth and honesty mm. and uncovering the stories and the lies that we're telling ourselves, moment by moment, and consciously realigning and consciously choosing to live a life I love and it, and, it, and it's yeah it's a surrender it's a surrender and, and if we want to like I think we, we mentioned in our conversation you know either way it's uncomfortable or either way there's a signal as you say yes but 
where do we want to put our cup? Where do we want to put our discomfort? In the contraction oh, wow. or the expansion? And I chose the I chose the expansion every time because wow. I want to fly. Wow. I want to fly from the inside out. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's just so like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that yeah. just I just keep thinking now about you know your beautiful your beautiful coach, yeah? Because when you're connected with your heart, you're connected with your higher truth, you're connected with the field of all possibilities, you know, through all space and time. But then there's also this beautiful connection with 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 people that have helped you along the way. So can you yeah. share with us, is, it, is there a, a moment or moments or some wisdom that your coach, you know, gave you or just some, some wisdom that, like, like in not a, you know, some advice that he gave that you particularly remember or just some action that he took that lives in your heart is like, oh, that was so important for me. Um, there's, there's some core learning, um, I guess, and they kind of blend, but the, do it, tick the boxes. You just got to tick the boxes. So what I want to create is how we create it, specific, tick the boxes. So that then becomes your, your path. And when you're off the path, he'll guide you back on. He, you know, he would guide me back on. I think mm. but one of the biggest the biggest learnings was with my fatigue. Mm. There was um you know, and what you focus on you create and it perpetuates. And the the smaller I got, the less body fat I had, the less energy I would have, therefore the more tired and achy and I would heal and I wouldn't have the energy to do the thing that I needed to do, tick the boxes. So that ended up. We just lost a little bit of what, of what, what you were saying because there was some internet thing. I don't know if it was me or, or you. So if you can just walk us through that, that again, Beck, sorry. But it That's was okay. beautiful what you were saying, but we only got sort of half of it. So if you can just share with us your relationship with fatigue, and then what your coach was, was yeah, sharing sure. with you. So my relationship with fatigue was that it was very painful. And he taught me about the comfort, the discomfort thing, choose your discomfort or choose your comfort. And mm. what we focus on, we create and it perpetuates. So the more I focus on being fatigued and tired, the more tired and fatigued I felt. And to the point where I would come home one night and just be, I can't do this anymore, on the ground crying. And then I would, um, yeah, go and eat some food. <laughs> um, but on the wow. other side of that, he ended up reframing it and calling it discomfort. And I realized that my, and he says, you know, in bodybuilding specifically, if you're not feeling like shit, you're not on track, or you're not so like the worse you feel, the better you look is 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 the phrase he used. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I feel pretty bad. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so this is the cost for greatness. Okay. So then fatigue, I could flip it, and I could see that either way, it was uncomfortable, not going for my goal of going for it. And I flipped it on its head, and I embraced it, which therefore I surrendered to it which therefore it dissipated, literally dissipated to a subtle feeling of tiredness, but more because I befriended it because it was now my, my, um, my guiding, my light. It was like my, it was the thing I needed to use. Like it became my friend. It became, it became the thing that would magnetize me into the end result, the fatigue. It was, it was the point of signal, like you said, signal. It was, it became the signal. Wow, so, that's awesome. That is just truly awesome. There's so much in what you've just shared. So, one thing is that, you know, what, there was something there that your coach was sharing about perpetuates, right? 
And one of the ways in which it perpetuates was that you would fall off the wagon in the sense of, you know, you'd focus on the fatigue to the extent you felt you couldn't go on. And then it was like, all right, now I'm going to eat some food. So it was like, there was like this downward, downward kind of spiral that came about when you put that focus on things. But then when you put your focus on that this was a signal that was leading you to greatness, then it yeah. became, then it became, as you said, it became even your guiding light, which is just, yeah. that's yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah, it became, it became that, um, you know, when you're almost at the top of a mountain, but you're not mm. quite, and you're really, you're really tired. It became the whole, I'm going to get to the top of the mountain as fast as I can because that's what I do and that's what I love to do because I'm nearly there. And the, and and the peak of the mountain is the reward. So I just embraced the pain. I, what, what didn't, it wasn't even pain anymore. I just embraced it, the feeling, and then that comes full circle back to that resistance and, and flipping the script on the resistance and being friends with pain. I don't even want to call it pain. It's the signal or discomfort. Yeah. There's and, only and what, pain because we call it pain. Absolutely. And, and what I want to share with our, with our viewers, with our audience, you know, is that when you did step onto that podium, you actually claimed five gold medals. Yeah. So it wasn't yeah. just a journey of doing your best and, oh, yeah, I, I did my best and I'm proud of myself, you actually triumphed at a high level and you walked off that stage with gold medals that girls who'd probably been in this for a lot longer because you'd been in it literally months whereas they'd been in it for years. Yeah. You walked off that stage. It was so you that, you know, you got yeah. to that you got to that mountain. Now, having got to that mountain, I want to say that I feel that, instead of just being someone who enjoys fitness, who enjoys the outdoors, who enjoys adventure, I feel that you've made the shift to being an athlete. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing is an athlete mentality so that you could, you could now not line up against a sprinter, but, you know, you could, you, could, you could sit down with a sprinter, you could sit down with some other kind of competitive bodybuilder, you could sit down with a long-distance runner, you could sit down with a triathlete, and you would have... You know, you'd have that in common. You would be peers, and you yeah. could share your your own yeah. journeys. Yeah, and I think I'd like to pay like respect and gratitude for the work because I never felt being an athlete was for me. Um, oh. I felt, you know, we that the work that we do is I choose to live my true nature and purpose. I choose to, you know, live a life I love and, and, and live in full health and vitality. Um, so it, it, all the work that we've done has pulled away the curtains for me to allow myself to have an experience that is beyond my perception of self, if that makes sense. Um, yes, very much. So, yeah, and, like, it... Yeah, how do I explain that? Like the whole journey about winning the five gold medals was <laughs> out there is a pushed out version of what's in here, you know. Mm. And <laughs> it it was my creation. <laughs> That's um, that what what I what I created was an end result one end result of the bigger end result of the beginning of it <laughs> so it was the end of one era and the beginning of another era i i i knew like this and i don't i'm not saying this from a egoic like place but there was this knowing that i was just going to go and win gold i just i just chose it and then for me to now continue on this journey, knowing that I created what I did based on my 20 years of fitness, but I created what I did, it's 
inevitable. It's the next obvious action. It's the next thing. It's it's turning. It's the, the seed turning into the sapling, turning into the tree before it fruits. So the tree hasn't even fruited yet. If that makes sense, that it was it's yeah. a true nature thing. So. Exactly, exactly. It's like if you planted, you know, a, um, you know, we're not in England, but if you planted an oak tree, an oak tree seedling, and you knew that if it was given the right water and the right conditions, you know that if you come back in 150 years, it's going to be a giant oak. So yeah. that you know, from an acorn. You, yeah, from an acorn, from an yeah. acorn. So you can see your future. You can see your own unfolding to, to, to an extent, not, not fully, but to, to an extent, because you know that it cycles within cycles. Now that you've had this one cycle, then you had a little time off. Now you're back with your coach. So yeah. can you just share with us, you know, what's your, what's your vision of the next, of the next, the next upward spiral? Yeah, so, so just on the latter side of comp, I think, you know, because this, this journey is all about coming home to who we truly are and being able to decipher the persona that we've created uh, in the earlier years of life to survive. So on the other side of comp, I was very tired and I didn't want to track my calories anymore and I just wanted to surrender and let go. And but that, that's the part of me that wanted to integrate all my learnings and to bring the power home enough for me to take self accountability for anything that I that was in disequilibrium, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So I needed to bring the power home because I'd given it to my coach to guide me. I now need to be more integrated and accountable to myself to guide myself with my new knowledge and new wisdom and be accountable to implement that. So now that I'm at this place of, you know, this new beginning, I'm now changing my career. So much has unfolded since comp. I'm called to stay on stay on the train, but in a in a new way. So in a more integrated way, in a more consistent so my choice for this year is consistency and accountability and, and that's a big word, accountability, but more like just consistency, softness, kindness, but, yeah, structure. And um, just see what unfolds. Like, yeah. Okay. I just think there's a possibility to go even further. Yes, yes, on onto a world stage. Yeah. <laughs> because that's yeah. the next that's the next obvious action, you know? As as yeah. as you're saying, it's just a natural unfolding. But what I'm loving okay, so what I'm loving hearing is that this time around you're choosing from a place of power to sign with your coach because it's part of your vision. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was I'm in a lot more, like, honest place about it. Um, I'm, on, I'm, in a, I'm in a more true, like, there is no way I can do this by myself. I need that. We can't see our own blind spots. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I'm just being real, just being honest. And it's the foundation. It's my foundation that... I'm, you know, choosing to walk upon and everything else is going to unfold beyond. Ab absolutely. And so what I'd love for you to share with our audience is how this establishment of this foundation that you had with Comp has unfolded in ways you could not have foreseen in other areas of your life. Yeah, so um, I think... To do something that that was beyond my scope for myself, I had to let go of a whole lot of limited perspectives and things that were creating limitation in my life. So 
energetically I had to do that as well. So I've had to step up into a higher frequency, therefore gratitude and uh, courage, um, love, compassion. Um, yeah. So from anyway, I don't know how relevant that is, but Oh, it's Basically. super relevant, stepping into a higher frequency because the, the essence of the law of attraction is that um, like unto itself attracts. So if you stepped into a higher frequency, then you're going to attract higher frequency living. Yeah, so that comes from within. So this was a relationship with myself. This is, what, this is how it relates. So I, so I didn't get me to stage. Like I'm not going to take credit my... For getting myself to stage, infinite got me to stage. Infinite mm. got us to stage. Infinite wanted that experience through me, for me to see, for me to see who I truly am. And then I was able to admit that I wasn't happy where I was living, but only briefly. And then all of a sudden, I had to move out. And then all of a sudden, I've been gifted this new place that seems to be the most secure place in Townsville. And then I was gifted this beautiful friend that was heart-centered. And then next thing, I've um, been offered a leadership journey in for work. And then I was offered a new a new roster, a new position, a, a fly-in, fly-out position. So more adventure. Um, yeah, more, um, my relationships have expanded and got so much better. My relationship with my daughter is next level. We both had to purge oh. a whole lot of stuff last year and we've both created a, a new home for us and she's got her independence. She's seen me do what I've done. I've been able to mentor her. Um, so, so basically, I've... I've expanded my wings. I can fly even further, and I'm flying again, literally um, every two weeks. Mm. Um, yeah, I've created this this safe space for myself to just continue to expand. Yeah, just to continue to to live a life I love. <laughs> to yeah. Yeah, and, and what this is, is this is the power of yes. Because yeah, how, we, okay. how we started our, our chat was you said yes. You didn't exactly know what you said yes to. I mean, you obviously had a vague idea, but you didn't know. You knew it was the unknown and you knew it was the edge. Yeah, so you, you yeah. said yes to your edge mm -hmm. and now you say yes to your expansion yeah. and you do so with no resistance. That's one thing I think that is part of my genius zone is um, feel the fear and do it anyway. I have lived that out in the physical realm very successfully. I think because I have actually been quite afraid on the inside in a way. Um, yeah, so it's very interesting. I would... I literally paddle big waterfalls, but I would close my eyes halfway down. You know, so I've been doing that for such a long time. It's like now I can actually fall and or, or walk or do the thing with my eyes open and aware and and like with self trust. I can trust myself because of the evidence. There's there's evidence now that I keep showing up. You know? No, that's spectacular. Yeah. That is absolutely spectacular. And so as a as a coach, because you're a magnetic mind coach as I am, and yeah. as someone who's had a coach, what's your what's your advice for people who are wanting to go to their next level, to go to their edge? I think we must be honest with ourselves that we're not separate, that mm. we um, all play a part in each other's 
expansion and we really don't want to do it alone we really um yeah we really need to what's the word expose we need exposure we need to expose the dysfunctional states that we've been living in the limited states of awareness that we've been living in the parts that have been keeping us small the parts that are creating this internal conflict um, in our hearts the parts that you know might have a little bit of envy or a little bit of jealousy or a little bit of insecurity or no confidence and we need to expose those parts and those stories that we're telling ourselves so that we can move beyond them and really truly tune into our heart however it's challenging to do that if we don't have a conscious reflection or a a a a reflection of where we're truly at and but first and foremost we are not going to change unless we choose it mm. all right so oh wow that's <laughs> yes yeah, that. yes yes that. yes that's a big one. um the option of not changing eventually will become harder than the option to change and i've had a few moments now and i had one today and i had one like maybe about a year ago and i just looked at my my life and i was like enough is enough <laughs> how can we how personally for me i've got dreams and i want to see them out i want to i want to i want to be the thing i want to be you know I want to be the inspiration that I know I really am. I love being inspired in spirit. In I love being inspired. Like there's so much magic in this world. And I would prefer to believe in the magic than believe in someone else's perspective that there is no magic. <laughs> it's more peaceful for me to believe in the magic and create from a magic place. And like, you know, and, and yeah. Like it's 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 more real than it's not now. Absolutely, absolutely. It makes sense. Oh, it makes so much sense. So, you've also created this wonderful partnership and relationship with two other great, powerful creators and wild women. So, did you want to speak just a minute about what that's doing for you in your life and what that can offer to to others as well? And what you know, what how what it's called, just whatever you care to share, a little or yeah, a lot. Yeah, no, I feel the love and all of that. Um, so yeah, I think for me as a coach, uh, first and foremost, what I truly deeply wanted to do before I um, really came into true service was to embody the work myself. So that's kind of where I'm at I'm at a, I'm at a good place where I wouldn't say I'm fully embodied in the work but I'm definitely um an expression of assist an, an an expression of being a powerful creator and knowing that I'm a powerful creator we're all powerful creators but being and knowing uh are the same thing yeah the being and knowing you're a powerful creator is um a very powerful way to live and uh, my two friends Claire and Bronya uh, we've we're creating a program to um, bring women or men to depending on who would like to follow this work with us into the the truth of who they are this is creation happening day by day moment by moment the hearts connecting and the heart's truth being shared and then what's what's emerging from that so can you just speak a minute about what it's like to be with two other women who also can look at things in a real and raw way but also have access to that deep truth within their heart 
and, and, and so much love and so much, um, just the, so much ability to create from, from magic. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been really beautiful to, to be able to identify with the same intention of really helping our women and our men to come home into the truth of who we are. Um, mm. Intuition's a real thing. The field is beautiful. Um, the amount of synchronicities, um, the the way we're guided, um, the way like we've had a powerful um, online session with you as well, Jason, and mm. just the magic and and yeah, what's unfolding? We've no idea. We step outside. We step out of our way. We set the intention and what is unfolding from this is uh, a knowing that there's another way to operate. There's another way to be. There's, it's true that we can, we can live from a very powerful place. And um, this is how you live when you live true to yourself. Yeah. Um, the end result is, is living in your truth mm. is, is knowing what it is you truly want to create and bringing the power home to be able to create that and be in flow in that um, and knowing that when you wake up in the day you can wake up inspired and you can wake up and be focused on what it is you truly want to create and you can move these other parts um, integrate them bring them on board and and really, um, yeah, focus yeah. Your, your power, yeah. You, you can. You can do all of that and you can still have your dark cloud days. You can still have your moments and yeah. you can have your friends who are able to witness you in your mm -hmm. glory and in your power and also in your dysfunction. And they're not yeah. judging you. They're not labelling you. They're just there with you along with the journey, you know. Yeah, and I'm a believer, you know, everybody has a everybody has a purpose. Everybody has something powerful to offer this world. Mm. Everybody wants to live a life they love. Everybody has um, a genius zone and it's right there obvious in front of us and it's just time we get out of our own way to see it and to choose it. It's, it's, it's yeah, enough's enough with the... The limited stories, unless, of course, you know, if you are happy and content, and you know, there's no judgment. There's no judgment. However, if we want to be a powerful creator and create something big in the world, then there's a very powerful way to do it, and a powerful you don't even a powerful way to be it. To be it, yeah, literally. So, if there's someone who's listening to this or watching this. And they're like, oh, my God, this is so me. I have had enough. And they want to move forward and they want to be in touch with you. How do, how do they reach you? How do they reach out to you? Uh, so I'm Rebecca Francisca on Facebook. I'm at A Magic Way on um, Instagram. And, yeah, those those would be the best ways at the moment to, to reach me personally. Happy to share some wisdom and some education around this because it's not just um, it's it's science based, it's structure, it's intention, it's there's so much to it. Um, and yeah, if 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 you'd like to really establish some true magnetic inspiration, then yeah, I'm right here. Beautiful, beautiful. So lastly. What I'd love you for you to share with us is you've spoken so much about living your highest potential. Mm -hmm. So broadening that lens to its widest scope and looking at the highest potential of humanity. What's what's on your heart to share? Um, that everyone's at home within their hearts and everyone's living the true love that they actually are because at the essence of it, we, we, we're all love and we all want to live a good life and to bring the power home, to not live from fear, to live from truth, 
to co-create, to be the co-creators that we naturally are, to celebrate uh, everybody's achievements, to lift people up, to um, live a very compassionate um, life, to be fair, to wake up in a in a in a sense of to your to your genius, to embrace all of that. Um, yeah, no more limitations, you know. Like it's time to time to believe in to believe in the dream and and know that that it's such a possibility to yeah you know we've all got something to offer and we're all very mm. very valuable and the more of us home within our hearts the more we can uh yeah turn things around flip the script <laughs> absolutely Absolutely. Turn things around and flip the script, just like you did, and stepping into that higher possibility, that higher truth, and unfolding into a magnificence that's more magnificent than you can even imagine. Yeah, so we've no idea. We've no idea, really, truly. We've no idea. Or maybe we've got an idea, but we, yeah. you got to live it. you got to experience yeah. it. You know, so, yeah, like yeah, we're you're saying. Yeah, going to go our own way. Infinite has, infinite has a plan, or infinite has a you know, has a has an intention for who you can become. So yeah, absolutely. and part of us wants to control that, you know. But yeah, that's that's the part that might not want to show up, <laughs> but just show up anyway. <laughs> show up anyway, exactly. Like 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 you've done today for this amazing podcast. There's some gems, there's some absolute moments of gold that have been shining out of the screen during this, during this podcast. So we'll, uh, we'll end it there. I'll put some links in the description below to your, for your, for your contact details and anything else you want to, um, you want to share. And thank, thank you. you so much, Beck, for showing up and shining and sharing your magic. Thank you so much for having me, Jason, and yeah, for reaching out. And this is just the beginning. Yeah, I'm totally looking forward to seeing what unfolds and, yeah, just sharing more. Yay. All right. Take care. Thank you.